Hello and welcome to one more edition of What Matters Most. We are celebrating Women's History Month and uh, in a minute I'll be introducing a wonderful guest. Uh, and I also wanted to say that uh, I am very grateful to all of you for following the shows over the past several months. Thank you also to the volunteers. Um, Aaron Barry is works here, but we have Al, we have Wayne, we have is uh, we, we also have Helen and a few others that help us to put the show on the air. I wanted to thank them for for what they do. But thank you, thank you for coming to uh, to the show to you know, to have one more experience uh, meeting new guests. And uh, without further ado, let me introduce you, because it's Hi Women's History Month, I would like to introduce you to Carolyn Fleur Loban, who is here with us today. Carolyn, welcome to the show. It is lovely to be here. We put this off and I'm just so delighted that this is finally happening. Absolutely, yeah. it's been, uh, I actually wanted uh, Carolyn to be one of my first guests when I started uh, recording the show about uh, six months ago and uh, she couldn't make it, but today she can and I understand now why Carolyn couldn't make it. Carolyn is a minefield of information. She carries a minefield of information inside of her knowledge. She's a professor, but that's not the only <coughs> reason why she's here. She's also a daughter of a Ukrainian woman. She is a descendant of Ukrainians. And as you know, there is war going on in the Ukraine. And what we would like to do is to honor uh, those people that are fighting fiercely uh, for their country. And uh, this show is happening uh, today with Carolyn that happens to have that connection with Ukraine. So um, I would like to uh, say not only that, you know, Carolyn, I'm going to read her uh, bio, uh, short bio very momentarily, but she does so many different things. We could be sitting here talking about the Sudan, and we may talk about the Sudan. She specializes. In, she's an anthropologist and specializes in that. But she's also a beekeeper. She uh, <laughs> makes wonderful honey here in, in, in New Hampshire and also in Rhode Island. Right. So, uh, but anyway, uh, Carolyn, I'm so, so glad to have you today. Thank you. It is my great pleasure. Absolutely. At long last. At <laughs> long last. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read a bit of your bio. Um, Carolyn Fleur Loban. Uh, Dr. Carolyn Fleur Loban received a PhD in anthropology and African studies from Northwestern University in 1973. She's a founder of the Sudan Studies Association SSA in 1981 and twice past president of that uh, association. She is a, a professor emerita of anthropology at Rhode Island College, where she received the faculty awards for both scholarship and teaching and adjunct professor of African studies currently at the Naval uh, War College in Newport, Rhode Island. Actually, I don't need to read much about Carolyn because Carolyn has been my friend for, for decades. Uh, but I would like just to add a bit, uh, her research subjects cover Islamic law, Islamic society, women's status in Muslim societies, race, ethics, and anthropological research human rights and cultural relativism, and comparative studies in law and society. She is the author of several books on Islamic law and society in Sudan, two in Arabic translation. Uh, she has conducted research in the Sudans and North Africa since 1970. She has authored textbooks on race and gender, race and racism, an introduction, and I know that one be very well, in the newest edition, actually. Um, and female well-being. And as you know, it's Women's History Month, so that's part of the reason why Carolyn is here with us today. Together with the Haitian translator, Aslin Charles, she brought to a modern audience the work of 19th century writer Antonor Furman, The Equality of the Human Races. It was published in 2000 and again in 2004. At Rhode Island College, she taught courses on race, gender, African, Middle East, and Islamic studies, and she currently teaches religion, politics, and society in Africa at the Naval War College. She has served as both president and board chair of the World Affairs Council 
of Rhode Island, which brings to us a number of so many different uh, subjects that matter today in our society. So, Caroline, I don't want to uh, bore you with my lengthy introduction, right. but please, uh, you know, uh, tell us how you like to be introduced today and what thoughts you have, because you are, you are here because you're a woman, it's Women's History Month. You're here because you're of Ukrainian origin. There's a war going on in Ukraine. And you're here because of all the work you've done to make humans being wake up to treating each other fairly and and and, and not look at race as a, as an obstacle to interacting with yeah, other yeah. human beings and there's so many many more things as I said uh, how how would you like us to uh, you know take this from here well I feel as if I'm turning around who is this person <laughs> uh, but what I can say is that uh, one of the best things that ever happened to me was a friend recommended that I take an anthropology course. And at the time, I was a student at Georgia State uh, College, or now University in Atlanta. And I was thinking, well, philosophy, that's you know, wonderful. And I took some philosophy courses. And I thought, well, this is just all about you know, kind of airy-fairy stuff and possibilities. Uh, what about something that you know, deals with the real world? So I took my first uh, anthropology course. And mm -hmm. I learned then, and that was many decades ago, that this is the study of everything. So anthropology embraces all of humanity throughout all of time and space from our origins in the African continent through all the species that followed up to our current enormous and beautiful cultural and linguistic uh, diversity in the world. And I was so fortunate. I met up with a man, Richard Loban, who you've also. He was my first <laughs> guest. <laughs> he was your first guest. And I, it's a he power was so couple, honored, I should, I should so say. honored. Uh, and at the time, I was studying Spanish, and I was thinking about going into Latin American studies, but he was committed to Africa. And then I hadn't really thought about it, except that I had grown up in Atlanta and was deeply involved already with the civil rights movement. I thought, well, this might be an interesting, you know, a, a continuation of that. And so, yes, we ended up in African studies together at Northwestern, which is the oldest program of African studies in the country. And yes, we ended up having this immensely rich life because of one field, anthropology. And, and it has opened so many doors and so many vistas. You know, sailed around the world with the semester at sea twice, and I was hired because I'm an anthropologist and because I'd had, you know, so many cultural experiences. So uh, I'm just so grateful that that chance of uh, presented a friend itself, said, yes. Presented itself, yeah. and then it opened so many doors. and. From that time, those, that was in the 1960s, to this very day, I l still love this field and I still am learning from it. You have from to because I, in my view, it is the most important thing for, for, for not only Americans, for the rest of the world to learn about history, to learn about who we are. What could be more important than that? Because once you know who you are, you can succeed and, and, and make this a better world and create this peace in the world. Part of the reason why we fight so much, and, and there is war going on in the Ukraine, and we will talk about that we a bit later, that, yeah. is because people have a kind of breakdown in communication right. and there is a breakdown in education. This because when people are educated, they can talk at a different level. They can discuss ideas and not insult each other, right. and not attack each other, and not kill each other. So that's why I, I have uh, my hats off. Uh, I am, uh, you know, an admirer of teachers, and you are a teacher par excellence. You've taught so many, so many students, and you continue to do that yeah, today. Yeah. And it's because I'm in love with ideas. And anthropology is this integrated study of all of humanity that just makes the connections. Right. And it's, you know, right. from the physical right. side to the right. linguistic side. You know, in Africa, there are thousands of different languages. And, and, you know, the human genetic diversity and linguistic diversity is the greatest on the planet. And why is that? Because th these are the oldest, oldest cultures. It, this it, is where it, it humanity is originated. It's the cradle of yes, humanity. It's That's the cradle where of humanity. Everybody Absolutely. started off from Africa. And, Absolutely. and uh, yeah, people so. don't understand that. I always keep saying, and uh, I tell people on the show, but it's before you, you know, those that are prejudice or yeah, yeah, have yeah. racist tendencies, please do your DNA profile because you may be related to the people you hate. And that's so well, embarrassing, Well, my first day <laughs> with, every, with every class, and I was just started there at Naval War College this week uh, on Monday, uh, I, you know, I always start with, 
Africa is a continent, not, not a, a country. <laughs> not a country. <laughs> and a big one. And you one. still laugh when you say it, but right. you know, 54 nations. And right. you know, people say, well, you know, I want to go to England and France and Italy and, oh, Africa. Africa <laughs> so won't go to Africa. One, I just want to go to Africa as a single place. So, you know, there's so many right. basics there. Uh, everybody and, and who goes to Africa feels, it doesn't matter where you're from, you feel like this is where humanity started. Right. I mean, it, right. it just that's looks right. like where it would that's start. Right. I mean, you couldn't have had humanity start in the ice. The babies no, would have no. died. They had That's no right. clothes. Exactly. <laughs> well, and the other beauty of anthropology, yeah. not to belabor the point, is that yes. it takes the position not of studying from the top down, but right. from the bottom up. The bottom up. And so right. you start where people are, yes. learning the language, living with people. That's and right. Learning many about cultures the culture are so, and, and, so and loving hospitable, it. and uh, you know, so right. you, you the learning process is a very natural one, and it's a deep one, and it's one that never leaves you. So Absolutely. The language that I learned, you know, 50 years you ago, speak Arabic. Arabic. I and, speak uh, Arabic, and it's <laughs> because I Arabi. learned by <laughs> ear. Tell them Arabic, uh, because I learned by ear and I learned in context. And so that's the way a child learns. So when you learn a new language, your second or third language, the way that a child would learn, figuring out the world and then building, you know, that's uh, right. uh, all the structure. It, absolutely, it, it's a wonderful way. It's so, that, so you know, beautiful, we, and uh, I'm well. so glad you do what you do, and 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 continue doing it. Uh, because we need you. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to move a little bit now to uh, women's uh, <coughs> rights because I, I have been a long time fighter for women's rights. And as you know, I was born in Guinea Bissau, where women were very, very active in yep. the war for independence. They yep. even fought alongside men. And uh, that's where I was born. I went to Portugal and then I moved on to England. Yeah. That's why I still, you know, have a little bit of a sort of a British uh, drawl somewhere. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's, I've been here for over three decades and it's going away. But I, I, I think that being Women's History Month, we need to say just a few words about the condition of women. I'm forever disappointed to find out that women are still mistreated, that women are not achieving their full potential. They're underpaid in the workplace. They are, um, you know, the ones that take the brunt of all the work right. at home with their right. children. And, uh, you know, how can we make this better, Carolyn? Well, of course, women are foundational. <laughs> Without women and our mothers, the connection, the first connection that we have, this is absolutely primary. And I'm not going to ever say that there's a genetic difference between men and women, but in terms of what a woman's body goes through in giving birth and uh, rearing children and being that source of, uh, of, of, of comfort and uh, succor whenever, whenever it's needed, that is a primary uh, uh, affinity that women have for humanity and for understanding things at a level that are not intellectual or not having to do with physical force but having to do with the with the soul and with with the you know real people to people interactions and I'll have to say coming to Sudan uh, you know I knew I was going to an Arabic speaking country and had done some basic Arabic mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what I didn't know is how strictly segregated the society would be by gender and I mean, I knew obviously the right. female differences, but when Richard and I entered the society, I basically was put into a situation where I was spending only my time with women wow. and having very little interaction with What a blessing, I would say. What, what a, what a <laughs> blessing. And it's, at first, it's you know, it's like, oh, MD. Right. But I know. the beauty of that yes. was, you know, here I'm coming and trying to learn right. Arabic, and most of the women who were not as well educated as men uh, only could speak Arabic. So I went in monolingually, meaning that I had to learn by ear in the company of women. And I'll have to say, you know, there's some very comical stories I could tell because of mis <laughs> misunderstandings and misinterpretation <laughs> and being laughed at, but right. not in a mean way, but no, just laughed because just it just sounds so yes. silly. Yes. And learning yes. Arabic in that context, mm -hmm. in the context of women, with the support of women, mm -hmm. and all the questions, you know, they're not shy about talking about sex at all. So you're like right off the bat, boom. Right. You know, and very, women very, talk very about everything. You know, my husband always it. says, is there any subject <laughs> that women do not discuss? I said, I don't 
<laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so, no. So it was a wonderful way to learn the language right, right, in the company right, of women and right. children. And mm -hmm. then ultimately we kept returning to the society and we had one child and then two mm -hmm. children. You know, you know, Josina right. and Nikki. Josina and, and Nikki. having Josina there, she was just the star of the show. Oh, <laughs> having... Because <laughs> she's a little fair right. thing with right. you. Know, with, with, with red with, hair. With, with red hair. So yeah, she was yeah. just... She, yeah, there's so many funny stories because from, from women Richard. would come up to her and squeeze her cheek and say, "Yes, so good, I mean, you're so, so sweet, like sugar." And then she would uh, she would fire back because she finally learned a few words of defense, and she'd say, "No, I'm not sugar. I'm hot pepper." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> on a shut down, on a shut down. So th these are beautiful. delightful memories that just you know stay this with stay you. Stay with you. And you know it, it's what and we're it also shows the condition of women. I mean, in America, sometimes we complain about so many things, and you go there, and women are separated, and you know, and my initial instinct was when I learned about the Sudanese culture and the female genital mutilation, FGM, which I absolutely abhor that women are cut, you know, literally the genitals to please mainly for yep. pleasure yep. of man and, yes. and, and so forth. Yep. And it, it causes enormous problems yep. with uh, childbirth and, and yep. other complications, yes. you know, that they go through. I was just shocked to to sort of go back and, and find out, oh my gosh, I I complain about my culture, the Western culture, you know, women are not paid enough, but then it depends yeah. on where you go when you yeah. start going south yeah. to the Sudan yeah. where they have that pharaonic FGM. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know. The bad news is that was the case, and when I first, you know, we've been going for so many, so many decades, uh, that type of the, the, right. the, the most extreme form of circ circumcision was what was practiced. But there has been so much education about it. There has been so there's a, a major uh, uh, Afad women f uh, women's college, mm -hmm. which is now a university, that really engaged in an indigenous campaign for realizing they were never going to completely eliminate the practice, but certainly to reduce its severity. And I'll have to say with the, you know, since we've been going to the country 50 years, that in that time, not only were the forms of circumcision, you know, greatly modified, but you would never say that your daughter was not circumcised. That was considered you to be, you, you would never mention, say that. Yes, it, but it was now, a, there's a stigma. Uh, there but was now a stigma. with the revolutions that have taken place in Sudan, I'm not going to say the practice is eliminated, but it is so much, uh, uh, abrogated and, and, and reconsidered that now women are saying, I am not going to circumcise my daughter. My, and men are saying, my daughter you know, doesn't have to be circumcised in order to be married. And to say that That's publicly, amazing. it's That's amazing. amazing. It's, that it's is transformational. transformational. That's absolutely transformational. It's huge yeah. because <coughs> the Sudan is actually uh, one of the countries with the worst yeah. Uh, numbers in terms of percentage of women that undergo it has been. that very, very yeah. uh, painful and, yeah. and difficult. Yeah. Uh, it's not an operational surgery because sometimes they use glass or yeah, they so use, you know, different yeah, tools. Just scissors are, or, you there's know. infection, yeah. you know. Yeah. No, there are many happen. secondary effects, right. including, of course, you know, the loss of sexual pleasure. For That's women, right, for which women. Is, which is, That's yeah, right. Yeah. It's, it's the ultimate form of oppression of women. Right. And I'm so glad it's getting better. And I heard good it news is. that uh, Senegal, is. you yep. know, I yep. was born in Guinea Bissau, which yep. is south of Senegal. And in Guinea Bissau, women still undergo, so, uh, so what well, they call it circumcision, but it's, it's female genital cutting yeah. or female yeah. Yeah. genital so mutilation. On, on the subject, I just want to make a, sure. a, it's, a, it's an intellectual point, but a very sure. important one. Because of my coming to terms with this, understanding it, and then meeting many uh, women who had been circumcised and who would describe to me, you know, how horrible this mm -hmm. was and how typically it was, you know, mm -hmm. done on a day that they weren't prepared, so, you know, it was done uh, all of a sudden and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the repercussions were so great. Uh, and understanding what harm that was mm -hmm. and what harm that did to women. Mm -hmm. In anthropology, we're taught cultural relativism. Right. That every culture, you know, has to be judged on its own terms, and right. you, you're not really supposed to say this is good or this oh, is this bad. Oh, this is bad, right. Uh, right. But because of that experience right. and really thinking it mm -hmm. through and knowing so many women mm -hmm. who had been circumcised and then the troubles that they had with childbirth and so forth, I mean, it continues, and then being re-circumcised after, ch you know, just a, a, a every terrible child, suffering. Every child, basically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I said, this is a cultural harm. 
Okay. This is a harm, and this is something that should not ever be defended on the basis of cultural relativism. So I wrote a small article that was published Erica, actually in excellent. the Chronicle of Higher Education that has gotten reprinted right. vastly. Right. And basically it says there's no excuse for abuse. Because you cannot there's hide behind cultural relativism no. to perpetuate something right. that tantamounts to torture. Right, right. You know, and there's so many other examples, right. honor killings and... You know, right. killing elderly right. people. Honor killings, which uh, happen, that's right. happens in Pakistan and uh, very you know, in all these spread, other very cultures. So um, that freed me to be able to say, this is a cultural practice that I understand and I can explain for you, but I'm not, I'm not going to say, you know, I will not criticize this. And so that freed me to be able to make. To you be know, yourself and, and yeah, yeah, to, to go about, you know, uh, treading and, and starting your own, you know, yeah. road. Uh, well, into the subject of, of protecting and, and defending women's rights, really. That's this is what, what it, it is. is. This is what it is. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, I, uh, I'm i so glad you're here also. Be, and I can see there's a little flag over there. there. I don't know if you want to hold it. Uh, and I <laughs> mentioned earlier pride. that uh, <laughs> Carolyn uh, is, uh, your mother is from the Ukraine. My is mother's that Ukrainian, correct? yeah. So Carolyn's mother is an, was an immigrant from the Ukraine, from Ukraine, I tend to say the, but I don't use the for, for Ukraine, yeah. for, from Ukraine. And uh, y she came here many years ago. Can you right. tell us uh, the story, how it happened, how you and uh, your right. mother ended up in the United States? Well, actually, it's my grandparents. Your grandparents came. My grandparents came, right? uh, immigrated from Ukraine, but it was in the early part of the 20th century. And my mother was born into, she, she was the last of six children of this uh, this couple who had actually, they met in the United States and it mm -hmm. was an arranged marriage, you know, that mm -hmm. there's somebody from the old country or from this village, a neighboring village, and that's how the marriage was arranged. So she was the last of the uh, of, of six children, uh, but really raised in a monolingual family. So they only spoke Ukrainian, so she grew up, that was her first language, and then of course she went to school, this was in western Pennsylvania, a little town called uh, Ford City where mm -hmm. Pittsburgh plate mm -hmm. glass was, mm -hmm. was based. Uh, uh, and, and her father and all the men in the family worked at, worked in that uh, in that factory, uh, but she was raised in a very loving. I, when I think of the house, this house was so tiny and had eight people living in it, six six children, parents, and then they also took in boarders. So, uh, you know, the the kind of uh, the kind of collectivism and communal feeling that uh, that that took place in that small home and in that family, you know, was really carried over into a great strength on the part of my mother. Uh, and so when she broke free and left her small town and went to Philadelphia to, to study at Temple University, uh, she really rose very, very quickly through the educational ranks and then met my father and, and, and they married. Uh, and then of course uh, the, the three children were born. But her spirit of Ukrainian nationalism uh, I heard stories from the time I was a little girl, not only about the beauty of the culture and the beauty of the people, but how much suffering they had been through. Right. The, right. The, the Red Famine in, right. during the Stalinist era right. where Ukrainians were, you know, they were starved and, right. and the, the uh, wheat production, you know, was, 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 was uh, siphoned off to the, to the Soviet Union and uh, there was actually a, uh, 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 a plan of starvation to suppress this nationality. And it's been and going on for centuries. I hear that from time to time. And then there was Germany and then, you know, right. That's right. it's just uh, never ending. No, uh, it was a planned famine. And, and what we're seeing now, you know, that was during the Stalinist era. Some people are saying, well, this is a kind of- Repeat history, Neo-Stalinism. It? It's a very yes. harsh approach. And of course, Ukraine is the breadbasket, not only of, of, of the region, but it also supplies it's wheat to- it yeah. supplies wheat to the region, wheat, to North Africa, to the, the whole, Middle East. Uh, a third of the world's uh, wheat comes major, from Ukraine. Major, major, major. Yes. And it's a symbol, in fact, the flag here. Uh, this is what I love it. <laughs> Yellow. This is the blue sky. These are the sunflowers and the, and the wheat fields. So that's right. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the meaning behind the flag. So my mother imbued within me a, a very strong sense of independence because she was a very strong woman, uh, but also of uh, never be ashamed of who you are. And you know, Ukrainians, a lot of Slavic people, they did suffer uh, discrimination. And now that I understand about race and racism, they were considered they inferior. 
Right. You know. right. And she did. My father was German, and my mother was not nicely treated by that family. I'll have to be honest. And there were ill feelings, you know, that that I unfortunately, you know, was exposed to. And it it separates it families. Does. And it's a it's a type of racism. You know, I'm it very sensitive. It is a type. It is a type of racism. It's certainly, you know, uh, oh, ethnocentrism, absolutely. and it's it's absolutely. you know cultural. Absolutely. I mean, we we had discussions recently. Uh, uh, on TV, you know, a host from one of the networks was, uh, you know, penalized for mentioning that the uh, Holocaust was not about race, yeah, it was yeah, about yeah. something else. Yeah. But it was about race. It was about race. Even though yeah. the color of skin right. may be the same. Right, right. But right. people, I mean, I know, as you said, Slavic people were discriminated against, just like the Irish were. I mean, there were signs that said, no Irish, no dogs, I mean, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, yeah. Uh, around the United States. So, but of it, course, it, you know, America changes that. Right. So if you can pass for white, <laughs> right. you're white. Right. And there's right. been a lot of blending, as you well know, that, right. that, and uh, that whiteness, and that's whiteness becomes other, its own construct. <laughs> right. So it becomes, you know, and it also, it's also a way to uh, enlist people to, right. to continue with racism right. because, right. you know, you c if you have a different pigmentation, they can just say, well, that's oh, right. that's a that's dark right. person, that's, that's right. a color, you're brown, right. black, yeah. and, and that's how, you know, it gets all entangled. Yeah, but as yeah. you said, that was a type of, of racism. Well, and since guess. you know the subject has come yeah. up, race right. is uh, one of the best worst dividers. It because is. Because it's yes. based on what we call phenotype, outward uh, physical uh, appearance, and not on getting to know the person, of course. Right, so right. I already know who you are by laying eyes on you. And so it's one of the simplest uh, but most uh, 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 catastrophic dividers of, of humanity because you're not really able to get to the person because you, you're stopped you, you, by you're the... You're stopped by yeah, the, the way yeah, they look. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I had a guest here uh, on my previous show talking about his experience moving to New Hampshire is the only black family in Lee, New Hampshire, and uh, yeah. uh, we had that uh, discussion about yeah, yeah. you know how that was hard. Yeah. Uh, it's so sad I, because you know uh, I, I always say on this show that I like everybody, I love everybody, unless you're a murderer, liar, and <laughs> you know, you, or yeah. you're a thief. You know, I don't like thieves. I don't like murderers. I, I, I like everybody. I don't care what people think as long as they respect me and and they are respectful of other human right. beings. Right. I'm cool with that. Yeah. If that's the way it should be. And I will have to say that uh, some of my, well, I've just enjoyed teaching all, all the many years, but my most powerful courses and the courses that I remember the most, incidents which happened in the class, and the students with whom I remained in touch and still are in touch with me are students that were in the classes of Anthropology of Race and Racism. This is over 35 years at Rhode Island College and Critical Race Theory that I also That's taught right. for, oh, I, for I, 10 I, it's years. It's been so controversial. And it's funny because I then learned that, no, it wasn't going to be taught in the first place. So why are they even talking about right, it? <laughs> right, 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 right. It's a college uh, level education and, uh, you know, and but it created a lot of, right. uh, uh, you know, I, I would say fights in, mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. communities, including yeah, here yeah, in Londonderry, yeah. and I never understood why anybody would not want an education. I don't care what you, you know, how you feel about things. I mean, why would you be? Why would you be against education? And on what any is the point subject? of an education that doesn't make you? Uh, a critical thinker. It doesn't make right. you feel uncomfortable right. at times. We used to say in the race and racism classes, you're not going to really start learning until you get to your point of discomfort, where you feel uncomfortable, uncomfortable speaking That's about right. the subject, and you go there anyway. Anyway, uh, and yeah. you share. I mean, the, the, these right. are conversations that have to They're be They're difficult have to conversations, be but there are, you know, opportunities through the school system, through our communities for engaging in difficult conversations. Uh, you know, if you were an educator and I've lived everywhere and I, you know, uh, have a, an international human rights law degree, so my uh, main motivation is for people to treat others uh, the way they would like to be treated. I yeah. think that's uh, the simplest way of explaining what human rights is all about. Right. Exactly. Um, but I, I have an issue with people stopping uh, people from learning because we can all go back to being in our stone age and get into our caves, but that's not the way the world is going. It's going in a different direction. We are now looking into the stars. People are going into space. And right, right, we right. need to get along on Earth before we start going to these other planets. You know, it, 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 
and the foundation for that is education. It is, absolutely. Isn't it? And we are more connected than ever. Right. And one of the things I think, one of the advantages of the period we've been through, is the are the Zoom uh, uh, educational opportunities? Uh, technology. We've brought people yes. together. The technology right. has brought people right. together right. in a way that wasn't right. possible before. Absolutely. So you can have an international conference that, that's virtual and be in touch with scholars from all around from the all world. Around, all around the world. And when you realize we're yeah. all in this together. Together. What is the connected. fuss all about? Yeah, yeah. What is the fuss well, all about? Well, of course, we know that but this I, is about I, politics. Uh, yeah, we know. Yeah. I mean, my theory is that the 1% that causes problems uh, filters through information, yeah. Yeah. propaganda, to make people hate each other. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's coming from Russia, you know, in our recent elections. Russia had, like, you know, a uh, building full of people that are were creating stories that they were feeding into Americans to hate for Americans to fight, even yeah. to African Americans, saying, yeah. oh, you know, you're being discriminated against, but it's right. coming from Russia. You're right. telling right. black people yeah. they're being discriminated against in America, right. and you're right. sending yeah. this from Russia. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, this was happening. It's still happening. Very, and, very And subversive. right now, with and this And our war, elections, our elections, you know, we're... Our elections, exactly. Yeah. There's still yeah. people who don't believe that yeah. uh, uh, Joseph Biden, Joe Biden, <laughs> won the presidency. And, and there's no foundation for that thought whatsoever. The machines were working, and you know, and now some of the owners of those machines are suing people that claim that there was yeah. Uh, yeah. some kind of, uh, you know, electoral fraud going on. Um, it it's all unnecessary. Yeah. We really need to talk things through and avoid and create peace. Because look know, what happens now. Louise, it has war. brought this great sense of doubt into our. Right. into our uh, environment, our political environment, and I think actually great damage, which unfortunately is probably lasting. Oh that my goodness. These, these questions are, you know, can yeah. I really trust this? Is this person really being, uh, uh, you know, uh, honest and truthful? Uh, the one good thing about what's happening now is that there's this great sense of unity. We have all this bipartisan support for, you know, uh, supporting the Ukrainian uh, uh, position of needing and wanting their autonomy and not being a satellite of Russia, uh, right. unlike the, what the Russian propaganda is, that this is not really a country and this is little Russia. And, right. You know, Kyiv was the foundational uh, culture for, 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 for the whole region, for the Slavic people That's over right. a thousand years ago including right. the, the Orthodox Church. That's right. But uh, yeah. it doesn't get its due when you have a, a giant <laughs> right. which is trying to, to and suppress it, And it's you. very complicated. And I, I, I was speaking to some people that were receiving a lot of propaganda from Russia. They yeah. were saying, you, the, you know, Ukraine is Russia. They kept saying, it is Russia. But it's not. They have their, you have your own language over yeah. there. They yeah. have their own yeah. language. Yeah. And yeah. they do speak Russian as a second language. But it is an independent is, territory, right. and the Soviet Union is no more, <laughs> you know. Well, Putin hasn't gotten that idea <laughs> yet. And of course, he he's trying to reconstruct that, that the, the old yet. Soviet Union. Yeah. But uh, since, you know, this is something that I sort of took in literally with the mother's milk and from my mother, mm -hmm. the Ukrainian nationalist movement is very old, it, it, you know, at least from before the First World War. Mm -hmm. And then as the wars, you know, developed and, and uh, you know, then Stalin had his, his horrible purge, you know, in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. This just stiffened the backs and, and, right. and, and brought, uh, you know, a greater sense of, of nationalism. I and admire so what they're doing today. Uh, and people are staying behind fighting. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. you know, so many people left the country, too, yeah. over 2 million yeah. uh, already, 2.7, you right. know. Um, it's about 3 But now. so many have died, yeah. unfortunately. Yes, yes. It's just such a sad war. I abhor wars, and I, I you know, subscribe to, you know, the uh, 60s saying, you know, make love, not war, <laughs> you know, love and yeah, not, yeah, not yeah. war. And how do we get there? Yeah. Um, I have a theory yeah. that thugs are running the world. The ones that <laughs> caused this type of war, like uh, Putin, they're yeah. thugs. Yeah. And we're allowing people who cheat. I just said earlier, I don't like murderers, I don't like thieves, I don't like liars. But we're allowing those people to be in power yeah. in our communities, in, yeah. you know, yeah. In, yeah. in different areas uh, yeah. of our society and in other countries. And this is what happens when you empower a thug. Right. They and when you look destroy, the other way. They kill, yeah. they create dissent, they create wars. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and since we are in Women's History Month, or Women's Empowerment Month, right. uh, thinking about these things, uh, during the Second World War, uh, Ukrainian women snipers were 
famous because oh, really? they were <laughs> they they Did were of course embedded right, right. in households uh, and and uh, oh, right, you know right. were, were per perhaps not thought of as uh, as dangerous when they were walking the streets, but they were great snipers and really were responsible for for thousands being killed by them. And I understand that some of these memories and forces are being reinstituted. Re and so I would keep an they eye on keep an women, eye on them. not just women in the streets. And of course, uh, you know, some great. powerful women have been have been spokespeople now. Absolutely. But also, I would not be surprised, surprised that you have women who are actually wanting to be part of the armed forces. And I don't; they will not be rejected because their history is well known. That these so they have some background. They in have fighting background, for, and they have country. a story that's already there. So it's Absolutely. not like these would be the pioneering generation, right. World War II generation al already. That's well, amazing. Oh, I, yes, I, yeah, what yeah, what yeah. a what a wonderful yeah. uh, country, and it's so full of history. And you know, I I read up uh, some articles. Of course, I'm constantly reading about the other side also because they have a lot mm. of propaganda. And a lot of it, unfortunately, lands in you know uh, developing nations. Um, and Russians have always depended on developing nations to fight right. their war against the West. Yeah. You know, there was the Cold War, which you know ended up being fought, for example, in Angola. You know, uh, the, the, it was the war. People say there was no right. bullets fired during the Cold War, but there were bullets fired during the Cold War. But they were being fought. Uh, by proxy uh, exactly into in, in countries like it. Angola yeah, and yeah. Mozambique and uh, uh, many others and, uh, and Ethiopia and uh, all these countries. You know. And because we don't know the continent, first of all, we don't right. know African history, and we don't even know the, the importance of the continent. You know, throughout the war, world wars, for example, I mean, the Second World War, a major front was in North Africa, and there were major, as you've pointed out, uh, uh, places of insurgency or. Uh, of, of resistance mm -hmm. within the colonial capitals themselves. Right. That, you know, right. there's very little history that's been written about this, but you mm -hmm. certainly learn about it mm -hmm. when you say, oh yeah, my grandfather did this, my grandmother did this. Did this. So yeah. it, it's, yeah. It, yeah. there's so much of the history which is not told or not known, right. it's not or is taught. just glossed and, and, and over. And people yeah. Um, yeah. just don't, don't think about it. And, yeah. uh, but it, it is a complicated world because I'm thinking, oh, I mentioned Africa, uh, but you know the fact that the war is going on there, and there's propaganda going to Africa and going to Latin America and other right. places. There is a big resistance to democratic values all over the world, and this has been an excuse for those people that do not believe in Western democracies to attack America. It's Putin who's attacking Ukraine, but yeah. then you go uh, to you know visit social media sites and. And you see that there's so much propaganda where they're saying this is America's fault, this is the West. I mean, we take blame for so many things, and I'm happy to say that I was yeah. against the war yeah. in Iraq, and I was against. I'm against wars, against America yeah. fighting wars overseas when we don't have to, because a lot of people's kids die. You yeah. know, uh, we we lose our people yeah. by yeah. going to unjust wars. But in this particular instance, we have to focus on Ukraine. Why? Because this could be the beginning of the Third, the third World War. War. Right. Right. It's more complicated than so many people think. Right. Right. It's so complicated. It can trigger so many things. I'm hearing about Russia trying to get uh, weapons from China. Right. Right. Now China is the second major power now in the world. Mm -hmm. And I hear they d dominate the seas. Yeah. And Russia dominates uh, the nuclear so power stations. Yep. They yep. have more nuclear warheads, you know, than we do in America. Yeah, yeah. So between China dominating the sea and having uh, Russia with these nuclear weapons, why is it that this propaganda is now distracting people from, it's like you take your eyes off the ball. You're not looking at the war as something that can have consequences that can impact us here. We, we're soon not gonna be able to get enough, we mentioned the grain, we're not yeah, gonna get enough yeah, wheat. Yeah. The you world know. changed on February 24th, and there is Amen. a I, I like that. new the world, world order that is, that is just beginning. 
and we're afraid of it because we don't know where this is going to go. Uh, America is afraid to wield its power, right. which of course was decisive uh, during the Second World War. Right. And so I'm reminded of how much Franklin Roosevelt did not want to get involved with the war until after the bombing of, of Pearl Harbor, but he did not want to in, 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 you know, engage with, with what was happening in Europe. And we have we're that. We're doing the same we're thing We're doing again. the same thing now. I'm, we don't I'm saying, Biden, you're playing the role that Franklin Roosevelt played. It's exactly the same thing it. until Pearl Harbor. I understand it. We but, don't want to hit them. But you know, you know yeah. we are the, the ones that can make started. the difference. There's it no has. going back. The war And so the, I, the I differ started. with some of my dear friends and right. <laughs> relatives right. about right. the no-fly zone. Right. I, right. I, I really yeah. think yeah. we could make we the difference. We could make a difference. Uh, it, and the I, war I, would have ended, in my view, in one week if they'd implemented the no-fly zone. The Ukrainians would have won the war. Very and the controversial, would have gone back and to our, our senators, I've written to right. them all, both in New okay, Hampshire and in Rhode Island, you know, to say, please think about this. And of course, uh, you know, we're not in the position to make foreign policy, and there you have many considerations mm -hmm. uh, that, that we don't have. But mm -hmm. right is right, and wrong is wrong. Mm -hmm. And if Ukraine uh, does not prevail, uh, the dominoes would have changed. The world would have changed. Really. And, and, and it's, as somebody said that, you know, and I, I, I agree, and it's similar to what you said, that yeah. the, the world order has already changed. It, is. it has is changed. Is that um, uh, the war is there, and Ukrainians have already won because they're, you know, fighting tooth yes, and nail. That's right. They've already won, but they do need help. They do. They do need help, because if they do not get help, it's going to be a bigger war. Yeah, yeah. And I do and think the pressure is mounting. Not just you know some of the you know the usual suspects we would mm -hmm. think within the Congress, but mm -hmm. I think they're hearing pressure mm -hmm. from from uh, Americans, uh, average Americans who say this is wrong. This needs to be this needs right. to be changed. Right. I donated. I know like many many people wanted to make donations. You know relief. I was amazed. This was in Little Rhode Island. Uh, to try to make my donation of my box with you know <laughs> jackets and 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 things which I, I thought might they might be needed, the line was over a mile long. Oh, nice to and, hear and that. You couldn't. It was two hours to uh, wait just to, to to drop off your box. And so I said, well, I'll go back and you know see see uh, you know how things will we be a little later. We are a very later. very generous nation. We are. People and I came are, back and there was another receiving and that center shows had opened you who up. Americans are good people. Yes, really good, good people. people. And yeah. people lined very up people. waiting for hours to be able to to make this donation. So you know that when you when you see that with your own eyes and you feel it like an anthropologist, I, I just felt I'm so happy and I'm so proud Absolutely. that we're having the this. Absolutely. people this are. This reaction. Getting involved right, and uh, right. doing what they can to help uh, those that are helpless and are in need of help in Ukraine. And I have to say, you know, I, I, because I have a mixture of so many nationalities and cultures, and you know, that's yeah. part of the reason why I yeah. sit in this chair because <laughs> I I can empathize with yeah, everybody. Right, right, you know, right, right. I I was just saying, my daughter Natasha, you know. She is partly Ukrainian too, because my <laughs> husband is partly Ukrainian. I know, so I know that's lovely. It's one thing I love know, about Matt. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. and and you know, uh, it, it's just uh, a small world. It's you know, he's been very uh, concerned about what's going on, and uh, you know, yeah, the entire yeah, family yeah, has been very concerned about. And humanity what's going itself on. doesn't like bullies, and we can so clearly see this is these are bullying tactics. You know, trying to use uh, uh, might over right. Uh, and, and a nation that was, you know, sitting there minding it its own business. Unprovoked, <laughs> totally unprovoked. Totally unprovoked this, war of this choice. This is the most unprovoked war I have ever seen. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just, uh, I just don't find any justification, and nobody should find right, any right. justification for it, a except for all the propaganda that I mentioned, you know, we, people that got help from the former Soviet Union to fight for the war of independence, they yeah. are saying, well, Russians were provoked. Yeah. Why is NATO expanding to yeah. the shores and yeah. to the yeah. you know, borders yeah. of, of Ukraine? And, uh, and my question is, why not? If, uh, if there is no Cold War going on and, yeah. and NATO exists and they're saying, well, why does NATO exist? There's no more Cold War. Now, remember who was saying, let's get rid of NATO? Right. <laughs> Who's saying get rid of NATO? It's the very country it that is. poses the threats. And there has to be, NATO has to exist. And NATO has helped to maintain peace in Europe for over, 
half a century, right. way right. past half a century That's now, right. si since the Second World War. And we need, why do we need NATO? Number one, Russia has the most uh, nuclear warheads of any nation in the world. And why would you dismantle NATO knowing that you still have right. Russia with all, all those warheads? Yeah. And that takes me to the next part. Russia's economy is so small, it's the size of Italy's or the size of Texas. Mm -hmm. That's a country that's spending more money yeah. in weapons yeah. than in feeding its own people. Yeah. Yeah. The, I, I, I just didn't believe it when I heard that India has a per capita income that's, yeah, that's higher, higher than, than Russia. Russia. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you're a Russian, a medium income Russian, you're making less money than the medium income in India. So Russia, Russia's economy is precarious, it's terrible. They need to work on the economy and are feeding and improving their lives and not launching wars that they cannot win. They may win if they kill us by using the nuclear warhead, yeah. but I hope they don't go there because humanity still needs a chance. Yes. And some of the signs of Russian people uh, you know, standing up for uh, freedom, freedom of speech, but also for for right. the right to to disagree right. and the right to be a dissenter. Yeah, they and were we've demonstrators. Had these demonstrators, all over and the I probably they say the numbers are far greater than those who are actually coming forward and joining the demonstrations because this is deeply felt. And that wonderful broadcaster, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> she's she went she went heroine. with a, a sign behind the cameras, you know, uh, and she put her life at risk. She's probably in prison now in Russia, but. She was telling Russians, you know, because the media is heavily censored. Yeah, of course, yeah. they're telling lies to Russians about the war. They're saying it's a military, a small targeted military intervention, not yeah, a war. Yeah, yeah. And this broadcaster just came yeah, with I a know. sign and, you know, behind the cameras to say, look, this war going on in the Ukraine. And of course, she was taken away. She worked for a, yeah, a network. Yeah, for a, uh, major, a ma channel, major, Channel One, yeah. Right. No, talk about a great gift to the world for in, uh, International Women's Day and Year, you know, month, for uh, Women's History Month. Absolutely. Uh, historic she did, figure. That, that she will be forever in history. Her case is interesting, though, because apparently, you know, she was arraigned on the first, the, 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 the one count and not the second count of, of, uh, of, of uh, uh, whatever, uh, opposing the government. Uh, mm -hmm. But she probably is a showcase to say, well, you know, we're not as uh, we're not as authoritarian as you think, and so she may be used in another very subtle way. Oh, I uh, see. To of, say, look, to we say, have look, freedom of expression. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. That, that. So. You, you know, know Putin, nobody ever said through. Putin was stupid. <laughs> no one ever said Putin was stupid. He's he is a, he he's, is a he's a he's masterful. He's astute. He's very very smart. Okay. Yeah. And he was a KGB agent yeah. and yeah. very well trained spy. Yeah. And uh, he is. It was. It never sat well with him that yeah. the Soviet, Soviet Union disintegrated because as a KGB agent he was fighting to win the Cold War. Yeah. But the West won the Cold War. Uh, at some point, and now we, we're back in this confusion, but just think about it. What did Putin do to stay in power? He decided to empower all the right-wing right. organizations right. around right. the world, including our Republican Party, That's infiltrated right. by That's people right. who That's really right. love Russia That's and love right. Putin. Right. Remember that including famous quote of Trump? President. Russia, if you're listening, yes. you know, get, uh, get, get, get uh, to Hillary's, get Hillary's, to Hillary's email. Yeah, yeah, you know, yes. Russia, if you're listening. So Russia, the, uh, yeah. Putin is probably, I agree with President Trump on that. He's a very smart man. Yeah, 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 <laughs> because yeah. look what he did. He came to our country and corrupted the Republican Party. And I think permanent damage has been done. Because the question about the uh, legitimacy of our elections, the fairness of our elections, you they know, which was started with that. Right. Yeah, it's very, very hard to dislodge. Right. And right. of course, the first That's thing that's the foundation that of democracy. Once you start saying that the machines right. didn't work and, and you the say election fake, was fake stolen, news, fake election, then you become a banana republic. You're, so, you know, a developing nation that's fighting to uh, institute democracy, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know that in many countries, you know. Elections are contested yeah, because yeah. people don't believe that whoever wins the elections won the yeah, elections, yeah. and we brought it right to America. It's supposed to be the most developed and the richest nation in the world. Yeah. How does that no, even I think possible? that's the greatest damage that's been done in this last period, because it's very hard to undo. 
and people still have questions. Still have and questions. And even if there's they no question, they're going to say, those, they still believe things. that fundamentally right. things are, are, are not fair. Right. And of course, that's just propaganda. It but is. there are people yes. who accept it. That's the way to explain their worldview. But it's not just in America. Worldview. It's happening yeah. in Russia. Marine Le Pen in yeah. France yeah. and all these um, yeah, yeah, very, yeah. very right-wing organizations yeah. in Germany and even in, U in Ukraine yeah. had yeah, a yeah. very active, uh, you know, right. uh, but they still have a lot of people that were they supporting do. Russia in, you know, and, and those uh, two areas, regions that were declared independent yeah. and Russia recognized yeah. the Donbstar, I think it's yeah. called, and uh, yeah, the yeah, other... Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. uh, was recognized as an independent yeah. uh, nation uh, that's a part of Ukraine. Yeah. So I it's not just America. He messed it's with our American right. democracy that's and right. he, he right. left, that's as you right. said, a long lasting right. yeah. Yeah. damage where people have lost sight of who their friends yeah. are. Yeah. And I think now we're not back to the old East-West, you know, rivalry of the Cold War, but we, many people are, are describing what authoritarianism versus democracy. And so these authoritarian regimes, which you and I know very well from, from the continent of That's Africa, right. and yes. how much of a grip they can have for, for such a long time, versus democracy, which has to struggle. It's, democracy is messy. Democracy is like what, what we're doing. It's hard work. It's hard work. And people want so much easier to have one, uh, you know, one right, big one, man. One big man and one <laughs> yeah. authoritarian party. Exactly. It's so easy, and so it doesn't work. We've seen what happened in Germany, and right, right. you know, authoritarian regimes don't last. Yeah. I mean, uh, Hitler came to power, through a fair and democratic election, and uh, he proceeded to eliminate democracy. Yeah, he yeah, got yeah. in there and said, no more. I won the election. I don't want any more yeah. dissent and no other political party. I think that and is what is the paradigm for now. And it's not the geographical differences, but it's the it's the authoritarian regimes and those who are supporting them or backing them, and and the struggle the struggle for democracy. That's right. And one thing beautiful about our country, and I have lots of criticisms, you know, racial, of course, you know, of course. But one thing we are still struggling to perfect our democracy, and the fact that that, that there's still grassroots actions, grassroots action like what you're doing. I mean, this is a grassroots democratic <laughs> forum. Helping my community Helping to, your community. to learn about different... No, uh, it, it's, it's true service, and this is where it really matters. Right. Because all politics is local. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and speaking of which, I know you've run for office, I and I've office, run for office, and for I'm going to run again. That's I've been right. uh, tapped, you know, to I, run I again as a Democrat. I think the voters <laughs> rejected me, so I'm out. <laughs> well, they rejected me, too. They don't too, like but me. <laughs> <laughs> they rejected uh, me, they, too. But they, they don't like me, and, uh, you know, and I mean, they like me. I thank the 5,000 or more that voted for me, but, uh, yeah. you know, I really love them. Uh, thank you, but I figure that, Politics. Uh, I love politics. I love yeah. Uh, yeah. following. I like democracy, but I think some people, other people, can run for office that yes. can can well. galvanize uh, the voters and and get them to vote for them. And frankly, um, Louisa, I'm running because I know I'm going to lose in, the, in my <laughs> particular county. Cindy but I'm running, and I'm running hopefully with a young uh, law student from UNH. That's nice. Uh, who's LGB, you know, he's very active. LGBTQ, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but we're running to get the ideas out there. That's right. To put ideas out and to have a forum. It is right. education. People need an so alternative. That's the goal. They need to that's see the goal. different realities. Yeah. And there is not only one story. Humanity has different facets to it. Yeah. As I said, I don't mind people being Republican, Democrat, you know, Democrats, yeah, yeah, yeah. or Europe from the Green Party. But just respect each other and fight on ideas. Don't this fight each right. other that's because right. we're all sisters, brothers, and neighbors, and we should love our neighbors. I have neighbors that differ with me politically, but when I was fighting cancer, they brought me meals. And, uh, and that's, that shows the sort of community I live in. I live in a beautiful community here in Londonderry. My neighbors uh, were just amazing, the way they supported me when I was fighting for my life. Uh, it's, it's just what this town is. It's yeah. full of love. What we don't need is people like Putin coming here and telling people that the elections were not fair, people are teaching yeah, yeah. CRT and creating yeah. artificial problems that don't exist in the community. I think education is very important. It's absolutely critical. And undermining those uh, those fundamentals is really the way to open the doors to totalitarianism. And we've, it's not like we can't recognize this because we've had it and we've certainly had a taste of right, it in right. the last administration. Right. So uh, we have a vision of what could happen. Exactly. And, and you know, the, the school committees that are saying you can't talk about anything That's that right. makes a child feel uncomfortable, a white child feel uncomfortable, 
What about all what about the children of color who've been sitting in classrooms where they did, not, didn't count for? But it's not, it's it. What's really sad is that when you see these uh, exercises they do, they put children in a room and they say, "Who is beautiful?" They bring a picture of a black person and a white person. Even black kids thought black people were ugly. Black kids said white people were beautiful. Choose the most beautiful doll. Which doll? Choose is what, <laughs> they were picking the white doll. Yeah. This kind of. Uh, yeah. uh, brainwashing that goes on is yeah. unnecessary and it takes away from my passion which is astrology i i i feel like i'm i'm talking about all these issues i just want people to yeah. love each yeah. other yeah. work yeah. together and let's discover yeah. what's beyond us beyond yeah. beyond planet earth right. and let's right. you know be loving and let's love our flowers our environment save the yeah. environment yeah. which is yeah. a huge yeah. issue yeah. You know, we may disappear as a species if we continue yeah. on the path that we are on yeah. now. Yeah. So what I'm really hoping is that with these conversations, bringing you here and a few other people that are, have spent so much time thinking about these issues, that you yeah. bring them here and we share them with our community. I'm glad you have the dream and keep the dream alive <laughs> because we have to dream we have what to. is possible. We have to. And I always have said to my students when they say, oh my God, this has been such a horrible struggle with you know, racial equity and you know, the history of racism. And I said, you must choose optimism. You must we choose have no to be optimistic. You have no other choice. No other choice because, because the, can't the other, and, and I'm so glad you said that uh, because when I had I mentioned earlier about my cancer, there were times yeah. when I, you know, when I had it, because I'm a very practical and pragmatic yeah. person too, even though I maybe don't look like it, I was like, well, I'm going to, I may die. It's 50 50 chance. I may live or I may die. So let me prepare for death and prepare for living. But then as I was preparing for death, I got really depressed. I said, if I prepare for death, I'm going to die. I yeah, don't want to yeah. prepare for death. Yeah, so I choose life. You either alive or not yeah so prepare Beautiful. for living and my doctors just saw me as a star patient they were like oh louisa you look yeah. so beautiful you're yeah, wearing yeah, all yeah, these yeah, yeah. wonderful i said yeah i i, I want to live i want to <laughs> live. live yeah yeah i don't want to die i not agree more so and i always tell my students even though you can i mean these are dark times right if you don't choose optimism you will let this all drag you down and that's the last thing we need wow. i mean at least in our society we have we have freedom of speech even though it sometimes is challenged. Yes, we, 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 we fight, but we, we keep fighting for we do, it. We do. You know, we this do. is a country that I absolutely adore. I came here 31 years ago, uh, hired by the federal government to work as a broadcaster, and here yeah. I come back to my old job. Yeah. Uh, and I worked in Washington, D.C., and learned about American democracy, and I had not sort of, I, I, I don't think I spent a lot of time learning about American history yeah. before yeah. coming yeah. here. But yeah. as I became you know, a broadcaster, I had to know more than <laughs> most people because I was broadcasting. I started reading up about American history and I started falling in love with this country. And I do think it's the greatest nation on earth. Yeah. It, it is a melting pot, even though we don't like to talk about a melting pot. A melting pot means you keep your identity, but you bring in what's beautiful about your culture to make America better. And so, and coming back to my source, my mother and, and the uh, great impact that she had on my life. My mother was a fighter, and even you know she was beautiful. She was the runner up for Miss Crazy. I'm asking Erin to to put a picture, uh, put she up a picture lovely, of your of your mother on the show. She was a fighter, and she never you know she would go up against uh, injustice. She would go up against someone who was trying to cheat her, and you know <laughs> not to, not to give a fair deal. Uh, she would take on companies and corporations and. Uh, she just was someone who said, I'm not going to take no, this is wrong, and do it. And, and so that's I, what we are, that's, that's what, what you've been doing. doing. I, I, if anything, I, I, I took that from You her. did. <laughs> I mean, we so admire you. And I, I want you back. I, I, I always, I think there's going to be a rotation. You know, you're one of the guests that I definitely want to have back. You know, like this that. was a, a special show on uh, Women's History Month, and I have one of the most uh, admirable women I know, Carolyn Fleur Loban. She is incredible. I just, I can't tell you how much admiration I have for her because of what she does and how she raised the family. And she, 
is conservative in you know, a family values. Her family is beautiful, and her daughters are so <laughs> wonderful, and they're all doing their own thing. But it's it's this combination of being a family person and being a, a, a teacher and being a women's right uh, women, women's rights. Uh, uh, advocate yeah, that yeah. makes you so special and I definitely am very grateful that you came and we're coming to the end of our show. My goodness, how <laughs> fast an hour goes. But I uh, just wanted to say, yes. you know, the, what matters most. You, you there you go. That's what my matters my most is what you have said, but it really comes back to family. And it's Doesn't family it? in the sense of the family. The anchor. That it's the anchor, it's the family of origin, it's the family of creation, but it's the human family too. And I know you feel it very strongly because you embrace all of humanity throughout the all world and you have diversity. You're walking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking, I the walking example of uh, all nationalities in one person here. Absolutely. Uh, I but have them all in equal amounts. So it's that human family yes. that we share. And that right. what matters is family in the right. sense of connection, whether it's at the micro level or the macro Absolutely. level of, all of humanity. And that means also you can disagree with your family and you can break from your family when they're not doing what is right. So exactly. we have a... We have a Speaking we your mind and being truthful is very important. Absolutely. 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 Well, thank you for being on the show. <laughs> Come back again. I and I want to thank shall. all of our volunteers and Erin Berry also. Uh, so Isabel, uh, sorry, Helen Borelli and Wayne. And uh, I, I don't know if Al was here today, but all of the volunteers that are here today to make the show possible. Thank you so much for watching the sixth edition of What Matters Most. We'll be back next month uh, with new guests and I hope that you share this uh, video once you get it. Thank you so much. Until next time, bye-bye.